Hi everyone and welcome again to our class. We continue with our discussion on Unit 1 entitled The Invisible World and we'll discuss for this video about what our ancestors know. What do ancient people believe about the sources of diseases and how are they transmitted? So we'll be talking about this but before that Please subscribe to my channel so that you will receive the latest videos on the different subjects that I teach. Now, what do our ancestors actually know? Well, the ancient people had some notion of microbial life. In other words, I may pagkaka well, hindi, hindi malalim ang pagkakaunawa nila tungkol sa mga mikrobyo dahil hindi naman talaga nila ito nakikita and the microscope had not yet been invented but somehow they have some notion of the microbial life and this is because since prehistoric times ancient people used that knowledge to develop foods as well as prevent eh, to prevent and also treat diseases. Here's a picture of the uh, yeast cells which are used for production of bread so this will uh, the production of bread has uh, has been done for several thousands of years so ancient people have been doing this so how do they do that you have your yeast here probably you got it from the yeast powder and then you will mix it up with water with flour eggs uh, sugar and other important components of bread making put it in the oven and then the bread you you have or produce soft bread now the reason you have soft bread is because the yeast cells will metabolize the sugars that are found in the batch and because of the metabolism they produce carbon dioxide which actually causes the bread to rise thus producing what we call as soft bread. So your Saccharomyces cerevisiae, which is the yeast, help produce what we call as soft bread. So this is how ancient people made use or utilize microorganisms action, even though they really haven't seen or even understand or haven't seen the existence of microbial life that are invisible to the eyes. Now, in addition to that, prehistoric humans uh, admittedly have very limited understanding and varying causes of disease. So, konti lang talaga yung kanilang pagkakaunawa sa pinagmumulan ng mga kasakitan. Kaya marami silang mga iba't ibang kaisipan patungkol sa pinagmumulan ng diseases. So, as what we have discussed in the beginning of our unit one, some people believe that it is because of bad luck. Some people believe that it is because of divine punishment from the gods or perhaps it's just some evil spirit that is uh, residing inside the head or residing inside the body causing those illnesses so these are some of the notions and, and uh, uh, belief of many ancient people up to the middle ages about the sources of diseases so talagang konting konti lang talaga limitado ang pagkakaunawa ng mga tao ng pagkakataong yan Yet, sa kabila niyan, in spite of that, evidence still suggests that prehistoric people still attempted to treat illnesses and their infections. Now, this is one example of them trying to, to treat their illnesses. Here is Otzi, the Iceman, who was a 5,300-year-old mummy found in the Otstal Alps in the between the Austrian Italian border in 1991. As you can see in the picture here, here are scientists studying the body of Otzi, uh, freshly recovered from the ice. Now, what does this uh, tell us? Now, it's interesting to note that scientists discovered he was infected by the eggs of the parasite Trichuris trichuria, which means that he might have adult form of this worm which usually are found in the large intestine the cecum the appendix of the host which would be producing a lot of pain or abdominal pains in addition to that otzi was also discovered to have been infected by the borrelia burgdorferi which is a bacterium that causes lyme disease and lyme disease the symptoms of this would be fever headache fatigue characteristic skin rash and this 
bacterium is transmitted by the bites of ticks. And here's a picture of that bacterium. Now, unfortunately, for those who are infected by Lyme disease, it would have spread to joints, to the heart and nervous system, which would prove to be very, very painful. Now, with this pain, it seems that Otzi tried to treat his infections. It's because of the discovery of Piptoporus betulinus, which is a fungus, and was found to be tied alongside his belongings. Now, Piptoporus betulinus has been discovered to have laxative effect and probably was used by Otzi to expel the worms. So, makikita natin dito na ang mga sinaunang tao sa kabila na hindi nila naiintindihan ang microbial life, the mere fact na hindi pa nila ito nakikita because the microscope has not yet been invented, sa kabila nito ay gumagawa silang kaparaanan para mabigyan ng solusyon at matreat o mabigyan ng lunas ang mga kasakitan na kanilang nararamdaman or kanilang nararanasan. In addition to that, Otzi also probably tried to treat his infection and this is given or this is proven by the fact that tattoos has been found all around his body and these tattoos were made by making incisions into the skin filled with herbs and also then burned. So makikita natin dito na ang mga sinaunang tao, ancient people, prehistoric people would try to give solutions or treat their infections. Now, it's not only Otzi, but another evidence would be looking at several ancient civilizations. It appears that they may have some understanding that diseases could be transmitted by things they could not see. So, yung pinapakita lamang nito na ang mga sinauna mga civilization ay maaaring merong, may, meron silang pagkakaunawa tungkol sa microbial life dahil uh, sa mga practices na ginagawa, ginawa nila which proves or which somehow show that they believe, naniniwala sila na may ang mga ma bagay na hindi nakikita ang nagdadala ng mga kasakitan na ito. One example is the Bible which is written through the Jewish, ancient Jewish people and the Bible refers to practice of quarantining people with the disease called leprosy and other diseases. So yung mga sinaunang Jewish people, sinaunang mga Hudyo ay kanilsa kanilang inihihiwalay ang may mga sakit ng leprosy at iba pang kasakitan para sila ay hindi makahawa. Another one is are the ancient Greeks Although the uh, ang pagkakaunawa o paniniwala nila ay ang sakit ay natatransmit o ito ay nadadala ng mga ng hangin kaya they believe or they attribute the diseases to bad air or what they call as miasmatic odor. Now in this case this is what they call what we call as the miasmatic theory and the mas miasmatic theory simply poisonous air is believed to have cause such diseases cholera, chlamydia, and the Black Death. Now, the Black Death uh, happened during the Middle Ages, wherein almost one-third of the population of Europe was wiped out. It's because of a, what we call as the plague, which is a disease later, disco later, uh, n later discovered to have been brought about by rats, rodents, and the bacterium that they carry. So the origin of auto epidemics used to be believed to be caused by miasma emanating from rotten organic matter. Now the Romans also believe in that. So it's not only the Greeks, but also the Romans believed in the miasma hypothesis. And, and because of that, they created a complex sanitation infrastructure to deal with this sewage. So in other words, dahil naniniwala ang mga Romans do sa miasma hypothesis, wherein the bad air from rotting things will be bringing diseases. So ang ginawa nila, they made what they call as the cloaca maxima or translated as the greatest sewer which ran to, through the heart of ancient Rome which brings away or carries away the waste products or the waste of the city towards the Tiber River. So very interesting na sa kanilang pagkaunawa sa sakit which they believe to be caused by by asthma, eh tama yung kanilang naging, naging action na ang ginawa nila ay yung mga waste product, yung dumi ng tao at saka dumi ng hayop ay kanilang kinakerry away wash away ito sa pamagitan ng, ng napakahabang struktura uh, 
carrying these base products towards the Tiber River. So very interesting from the latrines, from their comfort rooms, down towards the river. That is why some researchers believe that the infrastructure helped protect Romans from epidemics and waterborne illnesses. So it's very interesting that in spite na kulang ang kaalaman nila at hindi nila alam ang existence ng mga mikrobyo, ay naging tama yung action nila sa pamamagitan ng pag-alis ng mga waste products sila away from where they are living and towards somewhere else na ito ay hindi makaka-infect sa kanila. So that is why uh, scientists believe that they were spared from many waterborne dis illnesses and diseases because of this structure. Now, in addition to civilization, let's, uh, let us now look at some important personalities in the ancient times that would be related to microbiology, one of which is the Greek physician by the name of Hippocrates, who is considered to be the father of Western medicine. Now, interestingly enough, uh, see, uh, Hippocrates dismissed the idea that diseases was caused by supernatural forces. Now, the discuss natin sa pinakasimula na uh, the, the ancient and ancient people and people in the Middle Ages believe that sicknesses and diseases are caused by many factors such as bad luck or divine punishment by the gods or simply it is evil spirits lurking inside of the body so you have to remove this so these are some of the supernatural forces that ancient people prehistoric people and even people in the middle ages believe are the causes of disease but not for hippocrates because he believed that these diseases are has natural causes from either within the patient or from their environment. So very interesting na merong isang tao kahit sa panahon na yan na naniniwala na ang sakit o ang kasakitan ay nagmumula kung hindi ito sa kaloob-looban ng tao, ito ay nagmumula mula, magmumula doon sa nakapalig, nakapalibot doon sa tao o doon sa community. So this is what Hippocrates believed. Another important personality in the ancient times will be the Greek philosopher and historian Thucydides. Now, si Thucydides ay isang, isang, uh, is, is a person who is considered to be the father of scientific history because of advocating evidence-based analysis of cause and effect reasoning. Now, cred credited to him, he observed what we call as the Athenian plague. At ang Athenian plague na ito ay pumatay ng halos one-third ng population of Athens between 430 and 410 BC. Now, what is very interesting with his observation is the fact that he noted that survivors, those who became infected and ill because of this disease but later recovered, the survivors did not get reinfected with the disease even when they were still, they were, they were actively or they were taking care of actively sick people. So sa kabila na si na ang mga survivors na ito ay nag-aalaga ng may kasakitan, may kasakitan na tao, ang, ang mga survivors na ito ay hindi nagkakasakit. So this shows an early understanding of the concept of what we call as immunity. So very interesting. Sa kabila ng wala silang idea uh, of the existence of microbes and microorganisms, unti-unti na dadagdagan na dadagdagan ng kaalaman nila habang tumatagal during the ancient times. Now, here's another theory of the disease and this is the theory called imbalance. Now, what do we mean by imbalance? Yung hindi balance o merong sobra, merong kulang. And they believe that diseases, diseases are a result of the imbalance of humors or fluids inside of the body like the yellow bile which is related with fire, the black bile related with earth, the phlegm related with water, and blood which is related with air. So blood, yellow bile, black earth, phlegm, fire, earth, water, and air. So if there is an imbalance with this fluids, things inside of the body, then you will have diseases. Now, Another important personality is Marcus Terentius Varro, who was a prolific writer, Roman writer. Now, in this case, he didn't believe in the miasmatic theory. He didn't believe in the imbalance of fluids or humors inside of the body, but rather, he was one of the first to propose the concept that things we cannot see 
can cause disease. So very interesting na at that time, some people have some very important insights on the causes of diseases. Louis Pasteur.